see each of you here at Bethel Baptist Church this morning. Pardon me while I chew up this cough drop. Well, let's, uh, let's begin our service today by singing page 87 and 88. Let's sing the, uh, the arrows that you see there on page 87 and then we'll segue into more precious than silver.
Greetings, Rowdy Christians. How's everybody doing this morning? Well, good, well, good, well, good. Well, let's get rowdy for God. You know, we're not the regular church. We used to be a regular church, but nowadays we're not because we get rowdy for the Lord Jesus here in this church, right? Amen. Let's give our Lord a round of applause. Also, we want to say one thing God for the country we live in, too, as well. So, God bless the USA. So I wanted to uh, today say a special, uh, we're going to do an opening prayer, but we're going to say a special prayer for our, our president and, and first lady right now. Uh, but again, uh, welcome to the Bethel Baptist Church of Ingleside and everybody out there on our live feed too as well. We appreciate you and we love you. Uh, my name is Brother Brandon. I'm the pastor here for this group of Rowdy Christians. Please join me in prayer right now. Father God, we come to you in your holy and righteous name. We thank you for everything that you've done for us, your, your sacrifice for us on the cross, the many blessings that you stole upon this church family here in our community too as well. We thank you for waking us up this morning, Father God. Thank you for the air we breathe. Thank you for every little thing that we don't even think of that you give us, Father God, this, this gift of life. Father God, I thank you for one more day. One more day that we get to share the gospel. One more day that we get to share the love of Jesus Christ with one another. One more day that we can maybe make a difference in your kingdom, Father God. We ask that you bless this worship. May we do everything to bring glory and honor to your name. Father God, may you bless this nation. We ask that you send a revival across this nation. We got so much sin going on, so much violence. People are confused. There's false gospels out there. We pray, we pray for those that are going the wrong way that are led astray. Right now, we're going to go into a special prayer, Father God, for our president Donald Trump and the first lady. Lord, we ask that you heal our president. That you take away the sickness that he has, and that you heal him, and that we have him for full operating capabilities. May he be right in mind and spirit, physically too as well. Continue to lift up our president. Continue to guide him by the Holy Spirit. Continue to protect him from evil. He's got so many forces coming against him. And we ask that you uh, be with his the doctors and nurses that are working on him right now. May they have no ill thoughts or bad thoughts against the president. May they not do anything they're not supposed to do. Put anything in their bodies they're not supposed to do. Put anything in the president they're not supposed to put in the president. May they do everything to the accordance of the due diligence and also be right by you, Father God. We ask this blessing upon our president so that he may be able to come back and lead the nation. We pray for our vice president too, those that are leading the nations too, that are helping the president. We pray for those two as well. We pray for our enemies too, in-house, domestic, and foreign. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, church. All right, let's continue worship together. Page 517. <laughs>
Good morning. A prayer request that you would have this morning before we do our intercessory prayer. Yes. Uh, the Lily Layton family. Yes. Uh, Robert, Diane, and me. Okay. All right. Well, yes, John. Uh, Rebecca Taylor's pain went down from uh, 10 to 6 after they drained off the fluid. Mm -hmm. And then I have the protein thing now. Okay. I'm trying to give her uh, food, and they're just not sure how her intestines are going to do. So I'm praying for that. Okay. All right. Who else? Yes. The radiation, the surgery, and she's going to be going to work part time. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Who else? Yes. Rachel, the kids are coming back. Okay. Her name is Christina. All right. Anybody? <laughs> Same vision at least. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it depends on what you're looking at, what you're looking through. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's tomorrow morning right now. So I'm lucky to get that done. Okay. Rosie and her family. Excuse me? Rosie and her family. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anybody else? David's father-in-law. He got some pretty bad news on the test, so they're going to do more and see what they need to do to treat him. So, but uh, anybody else? <clears throat> okay, I'll go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, for the privilege it is to be in your house this morning to worship uh, with. Uh, these are people, Lord. We just uh, pray that each one would receive a blessing from being here in your house this morning. And Lord, uh, just we just pray for each family represented here. And uh, Lord, for uh, uh, everything that uh, families are going through right now in terms of sicknesses and, and troubles. We've had a, an unusual number of suicides just recently uh, in our community. <coughs> uh, and uh, so we need you, Lord, for uh, just uh, what it takes every day to get through the day. And uh, so we pray for the health and sanity and, and all things that we need to do that. Every day, Lord, you know, uh, leaning on you is the most sure way to, to do that. And uh, we know that you care about us and forsake us, and we thank you for that. We uh, also uh, want to lift up. Uh, uh, some travelers this morning, Rachel and her kids traveling back this morning. Just pray for them for safe travels for Jennifer as well, traveling. Uh, so we pray for that, uh, for her to get back home safely. We do pray for uh, Ruth Ann and, and uh, the cataract surgery and uh, what they're doing to get that finished up. Lord, just pray that it's all successful, Lord, and, and uh, pray that that happens soon. Pray for mine tomorrow that it goes well and uh, I'll be done with this for forever. And uh, so we just thank you for uh, the comfort you give us in a time like this. Uh, we also lift up uh, some of the families that have lost re loved ones recently the Charles Barnes family, uh, Kathy Jones' family, 
and the Johnson family, and the Willie Vaden uh, family uh, on his uh, unexpected passing uh, last couple of days, Lord. So we just pray for this family, give them your strength, give them your comfort with each one of these families, Lord. We just, uh, uh, we just pray in, in the case of, of Willie, we just thank you for the service that he uh, provided to this community for many years in many different ways. And just for his overall goodness to folks, Lord, we thank you for that. Uh, we also looked up uh, Larry Hardcastle to you with uh, his recent news, the diagnosis of uh, potential cancer and things. And so we just pray, Lord, that as they look into that further, they find a way to treat that, Lord, and, and cure him. Uh, so we just lift him up to you and his family to you uh, this morning as well. Lift up Rosie and Lynn to you this morning, Lord, uh, and just uh, pray for Rosie in particular with uh, her pain management. We just pray, Lord, that that uh, she can continue to do that in a way that takes care of her needs. We know she's she's had a lot of a lot of issues with dealing with that for a lot of reasons. So we just lift her up to you this morning, Lord, for your perfect uh, will and your perfect healing in her life. Also, we continue to lift up Diane Roberts to you again, uh, just looking for uh, something that will take care of her needs in a way that uh, gives her relief from what she's been going through for a long time. Also, for Patricia, uh, help her with the issues of pain management, other issues that she has, Lord, as well. Uh, and we also thank you this morning for. Uh, the good news about Ann Wilson, who has completed her course of treatment for cancer. Lord, we just pray that they've got it all and she won't have to deal with it again. And we just pray that as she's, uh, because of this, able to go back to work and uh, start to try to resume a more normal life. So, so thank you for your answered prayer uh, for, for this family. Lord, we just lift up our pastor to you this morning. Just uh, give him the word that will touch hearts, Lord. Give us open and receptive minds and hearts to, to uh, the message, Lord, and, and uh, just, uh, Lord, just as, as you leave, have us do whatever you would like for us to do this morning, Lord, and, and just uh, keep, keep you in our prayers and in our lives daily, Lord, it's, it's a time like this is so, so necessary just to, again, maintain a sense of who you really are and where you're going, so help us with that uh, each and every day. We also, uh, again, lift up our president and his wife, Lord, as they're going through this coronavirus uh, treatment. And, and Lord, we pray that it will uh, work well and work quickly and uh, that they'll be able to resume its normal activities. And we lift up our country as a whole for uh, all of our leadership, Lord. We, we just pray that uh, they would look to you for their guidance and then guide the country accordingly. Lord, and we uh, pray that you would uh, provide protection for those doing their jobs, whether it's police or military or just uh, ordinary folks, Lord, out there living their lives and, and uh, trying to do that peacefully and safely. So we lift up our country to you, Lord, for your, for your grace, Lord, and the peace that we need that only you can provide. We thank we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Page 324. Thank you. 
for some good preaching. Come on now. Who's ready for some good preaching? All right, there we go, there we go. Not because I'm such a great talker, but because our God is such a great God. And I'm so blessed to, to be up here and he, he, he can use me to declare his truth, you know. So, well, here we are at church. We're less than a month away from the most important presidential election our country has ever seen, in my opinion. Our nation is literally under attack. Many of our cities are in chaos and some are being burned down. You know, our COVID numbers have gone past, the deaths have gone past 200,000. Crime rates, crime rates are, are rising twice as fast. And then, you know, just when we think it can't get worse, our president and the first lady, they get the COVID in the middle of all this. Should we panic or be afraid? No. We are believing Christians who 
have faith in Jesus Christ, and we should be fully trusting in him in every hour. Even in our darkest hours, we need to trust the Lord. But also get this, church, in our darkest hours, or in your own darkest hours, you might find yourself at your most courageous and finest moment because of your faith in Christ. So to be successful, church, we must think big, right? It's not hard for us to do, right? We're, we're from Texas, right? We, everything's Texas size in Texas, right? It's big, right? You go to Waterburger, we don't have a double meat. You know, we have a triple meat. Right? We've got the biggest stuff in Texas, right? We've got the biggest trucks, right? We've got the biggest tires. We've got everything big here in Texas, you know? So I want you to think even bigger than that. You know, Joshua wanted to wholeheartedly follow God. And this is the way to all his military success. You know, Joshua, at the ripe age of 110, if I might say, you know, he ended his time as Israel's leader with a call to his nation to follow his example, which was to love and to serve God as he had done, and to imagine no limits to the Lord. No limits to our God. And to have the same faith as he, had, he did. So in this case, size doesn't matter. We're talking about faith now. So let's go to the Word of God. And I think I think I made a mistake. I think I told uh, Brother Carl Joshua 5, but we're actually in Joshua 10. But that's okay. We can we can we can read it together. And forgive me, I have a little bit of trouble pronouncing some of the Hebrew words in here. But let's go ahead and let's get through it. So the word of God states, Joshua 10, starting at verse 1, As soon as Adonai the dead, king of Jerusalem, heard how Joshua had captured Ai and had devoted it to destruction, and doing to Ai as his king as he had done to Jericho and as his king, and now and how the inhabitants of Gibbon had made peace with Israel and were among them, he feared greatly because Gibbon was a great city like one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than Ai, and all of its men were warriors. So Adonai Zed, king of Jerusalem, sent to Hoham, king of Hebron, to Piram, king of Jermoth, and to Dabai, king of Lashes, and to Deborah, and king of Eldon, saying, Come up to me and help me, and let us strike Gibbon, for it has made peace with Joshua and the people of Israel. Then the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, and the king of Hebron, and the king of Jeremoth, and the king of Lashes, and the king of Eldon, gathered their forces and went up with all their armies, and they camped against Gibbon, and they war against him. And the men of Gibbon sent to Joshua at the camp in Gidal, saying, Do not relax your hands from your servants. Come up to us quickly. And save us and help us, for all the kings of the Amorites who dwell in the hill country are gathered against us. So Joshua went up from uh, Gilgal, and he said to all the people of war with him, and to all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear them, for I have given them into your hands. Not a man of them shall stand before you. So Joshua came upon them suddenly, having marched up all night from Gilgal, and the Lord threw them into a panic before Israel, who struck them with a great blow at Gilgal, and chased them by the way of the ascent of Bethorn, and struck them as far as uh, Ezekiel and Malchadah. And as they fled before Israel, while they were going down the uh, descent of Bethorn, the Lord threw down large stones from heaven from as far as Elzak, and they died. There were more than there were more who died because of the hailstone than the sons of Israel was killed with the sword. At the time Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord gave the Amorites over to the sons of Israel, and he said, In the sight of Israel, remember this one, this one's a good verse right here. Sun stand still and give them, and moon in the valley of Elzalon. And the moon and the sun stood still, and the moon stopped until the nation took vengeance on their enemies. 
It is not written in the book of Jasher, for the sun stopped in the midst of heaven and did not hurry to set for a whole day. There has been no day like it before or since, when the Lord heeded the voice of man, for the Lord fought for Israel. Ooh, that gave me a chill right there. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for this word that we, that we just read. And I, uh, I asked for, for help on, on, on the rest of the sermon. I didn't do anything without you, Father God. I need the Holy Spirit, and I thank you for the Holy Spirit. You guided me in preparation. Thank you. Now I ask that you guide me in presentation. You just broken and flawed vessels to declare your truth. May everything I do and say bring glory and honor to your name. In your name, Jesus Christ, amen. So some see God like our parents, and that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Some of us are even told that, you know, God is like the Father. That's true. He is a, he is a Father. And, you know, that image works well for those of us who have had a loving, solid relationship with our earthly Father. Others choose to put label on, labels on God. They say God's this or God's that. God can do this, and God can't do that. In a sense, they put God in a box of some sorts, and they confine him, and they end up limiting God's ability. We also do this with God when we talk about the Holy Spirit. We call the Holy Spirit an it. We make the Holy Spirit some type of vague force. We don't acknowledge the Holy Spirit as a person, which is a very special person, the very person of God himself. When it comes to Jesus, church, well, the problem's not complicated, but it's also pathetic. The problem is that we just don't say Jesus. You can talk to someone about, you can go out to the streets and you talk to a person randomly about God, they'll talk to you about God all day. When you bring up Jesus in the conversation, they either walk away or the conversation gets awkward. I know we've, we've, all, been, we've all been there before, but let's just talk about God for a little bit today. Can we talk about God today? The simple truth is that we fail to think big enough. We fail to think big enough of our God. The God that we have in our mind is simply not big enough. He's too small. So I want to ask you this. I want to ask you three questions today, okay? You always ask me questions, right? Now I'm going to get to ask y'all some questions, right? So how big is your God? How big is your faith? How big is the biggest prayer that you've ever prayed. I want you to think about that for a little bit as I go through the sermon. Because the size of your God will determine the size of your faith, which will determine the size of your prayer. So in this case, today's size does matter in regards to faith. And one thing for sure was that Joshua was an extraordinary person. He was a man of great size in regards to his faith. As a young man, he grew up and he saw firsthand how Israel was delivered from Egypt. He also saw as a young man who worked as a slave in Egypt. So God chose Joshua, who served under Moses in second command, to lead the Israelites into the promised land after the death of Moses. So Joshua had already learned the importance of obedience. Most importantly, Joshua understood what it meant to trust God. Joshua had been, if we recall, he'd been one of the 12 men who traveled to spy in Canaan, the promised land. He and Caleb, they came back and they returned a good report, right? The other report said, no, the people are too big. The area is too large and we are like grasshoppers. Out of the 12, uh, Joshua and Caleb were the only ones that survived, by the way. Uh, the plague fell on the other 10. And they died because they brought back the negative report. But Joshua, he plowed ahead anyways, right? He plowed ahead even though he had all these Israelites that they were in doubt, right? They were not completely on board. Joshua plowed ahead. Now keep in mind, now I told Joshua was young earlier. When I said young, he was, he was in his 40s back in Egypt. And now we're talking then out of the 12 men we went to spy on Canaan. He was in his 70s, by the way. He was in his 70s. So Joshua kept his faith. At Jordan, Joshua placed his feet in the water, and God honored his faith by stopping the flood waters. Joshua was able to do things that Moses could not accomplish. 
Joshua is a great example, a great Old Testament example. He's one of the greatest human examples we have of, of a Christ-like person. Uh, even his name itself has a reference to Jesus. Now, I'm not saying that's, that he was, but let's just say that he represented he represented someone of very, very, very large faith, big faith. So he accomplished things that Moses couldn't even accomplish. Joshua was able to lead the Israelites to the promised land. Moses never made that journey. In this passage of day, church, we find the secret to Joshua's strength. We read in chapter 10 that five of the armies were planning to attack the Israelites, so Joshua went directly to them during the night so that they could surprise attack them at dawn next morning. The distance, by the way, was 24 miles, so that was a, a marathon. So it was a bit of a distance. But I imagine that these guys, when I pictured these guys back then, whether they be in their 70s or, or older, they were they were in pretty pretty good shape. They're actually very good shape. So this is probably a walk in the park for them. So once they charged the enemy and ran toward the valley, as verse 11 says, the Lord hurled down large hailstones. Large hailstones from the sky. In fact, so many of these hailstones came down that more of the enemy was killed by the hailstones than the actual swords. And as the sun set that day, Joshua knew that his time was coming up. It was getting dark, right? And the enemy could slip away. So Joshua spoke somewhat, if I might say, an outrageous prayer. And a bit of a, it was an over-the-top prayer. He had a request. He said in verse 12, right? He said, sun, stand still, right? He asked God to make the sun stand still and the moon in the valley of El John, or Ajon. So, church, he didn't pray this privately, right? Because we've all had those prayers that, you know, we, 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 we pray, maybe we pray privately, we don't want to pray them verbally because they might sound a little bit out, out, of the, out of the ordinary. But this prayer, Joshua, he prayed publicly. And much to our surprise, and maybe even Joshua's surprise, God answers it. And he answers it immediately. So there are three things, church, that this passage can teach us. And the first thing that it can teach us is that there is a time for all of us when we should stand up and pray a God-sized prayer. And guess what? That time is right now. Ain't it? That time is right now, church. Joshua's prayer to stop the sun and moon may seem over the top, but it wasn't. Why was it? Well, I'm glad you asked. It wasn't over the top because Joshua knew exactly how big his God was, how big our God is. Therefore, he knew that the one true God can make the impossible possible, can make the miracles happen with a snap of a finger. So therefore, the same God, the only God, he can heal our nation. He can heal our presidents. He can heal our friends that are sick. The Lord can restore and revive the whole nation. We should never be afraid to make these big requests of God. Jesus said, everyone who asks receives. He goes on and adds to this to those who may be afraid to ask and says, I love this one. This one's funny. If your son asks for a fish, will God give him a snake? How about that? He says, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give those who ask? Wow. Therefore, church, stand up and pray a God-sized, larger-than-life, believing faith prayer. The second thing that I get out of this is that simply we learn to hold on to God's promises, church. Learn to hold on to them. Can't stress that just enough. You know, the reason Joshua had learned to be so bold in his prayer life is that God was bold with his promises. You see, God listens. He listens to our voice. We've been listening to his voice, too. You know, God, God spoke to Joshua and gave him a promise. He said, don't be afraid of them. I've given them your hand. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. Not one. 
And Joshua hung on to what God had promised. Y'all ever seen, y'all Y'all remember the movie of It's a Wonderful Life, right? They show that, they show that every year, right? I love, I love Jimmy Stewart. Y'all know Jimmy Stewart was a, he was, a, he was also a general. He used to fly, he used to fly bombers, by the way. A lot of people don't know that. He retired as a one-star general. Hey, they just don't make Americans like that anymore. What happened to us? Anyways, I'm going off, I'm going off topic here. So it's a wonderful life. Let's go back to that, right? So it's a wonderful life. Jimmy Stewart says to his bride to be, what is it you want, Mary? You want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and I'll give you the moon. Big request. That's exactly what Joshua was asking for. He was asking God for the moon. He said, God, give me the moon. Give me the sun. Just throw a lasso around it and give it to me. And guess what? That wasn't crazy because he knew God could do it. Amen. He said, sun, stand still. You too, moon. Don't go anywhere. And they did. The sun stopped in the middle of the day and the laid going down. This was not a figure of speech. It really happened. This is literally what God did. This is the first mention of daylight savings time, I think. So Joshua asked for the moon. He reached for the sky, and God said, I'll do it. Wow. Number three, learn to walk with hope and stand in faith. The word hope in the New Testament is the Greek word for helpless. And it simply means to confidently, confidently expect something to take place. So if you're like me, church, it's not hard to have hope in the small prayers, right? You know, I, I, I'm praying while my, my, my son's tummy ache goes away or his toothache goes away, right? I pray that this, 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 kind of, eh, this kind of blah day just gets over, Lord. And, you know, it's easy to have hope in those prayers. It's hard to have hope in big prayers, right? To be honest with us. Now get this. This is what encourages me in my prayer life. I'm encouraged when I hear others who tell me about big prayers that they've had answered. I'm encouraged when I've seen someone like my dad I've been praying for, who I prayed for for years and years, someone who, who cursed and, and, and belittled Jesus Christ, praying for a man who had his heart hardened to God for years and years and years and years, turn his life to Jesus Christ before he dies. That encouraged me. I'm encouraged when I see a family member who's been suffering deeply, we've been praying for for years, a long, long, long time, and that person is healed. God heals. I'm encouraged when a friend hits rock bottom from depression, suffering, addiction, and nothing has seemed to work in their life, and God steps in and they are set free. I've seen that in my own life, church. I've been down rock bottom. I've been at a point in my life where I just didn't want to go on. And I had people praying for me. Big size prayers. And I'm here today by the grace of God. Anything's possible because of God. I'm encouraged when I see others share answers to their big prayers. I'm encouraged when I read the stories right here in the scriptures. Joshua. Man, he encourages me. You know, Daniel encouraged me too. Daniel refused to bow to King Darius. As a result, he was thrown to the lion's den. Darius mocked him and said, He may, the God you serve, save you now. The den was actually sealed so that Daniel could not escape. God sent an angel and closed the mouth of the lions. Uh, Jasmine prayed that God would enlarge his territory, his influence. His name meant pain he brought so much pain to his mother in childbirth. She said, hey kid, you're a pain to me, basically. So he grew up with that name. So he prayed that God would keep him from harm and not bring him so much pain. The scripture simply says that God granted what he asked. David prayed that he could take down the Philistines. He did. He did. So listen, church, when God makes a promise, he keeps it. Simple as that. He keeps it. It's a done deal. God promised Abraham and Sarah a child. Abraham was 100 years old. Sarah was 90. Sarah said, we will name the kid Isaac, right? You know what Isaac's, Isaac's name means, right? 
Laughter, right, right. People say, does God have a sense of humor? Right. Does God think that's funny? God, God has a sense of humor. So God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears and bows up will laugh at me, which he said. And God gave him a child. You know, I spoke earlier in church. Remember, I asked you those questions, right? I asked you, how big is your God? How big is your faith? How big is the biggest prayer that you've ever prayed? And I'm reminded of how closely connected these things are. The size of your God will determine the size of your faith, which will determine the size of your prayer life, okay? So God told Joshua, in essence, all right, as I close the message, God told Joshua, my son, the sky is the limit. The sky is the limit with me, your God. So what's the biggest thing that you want to pray for right now? Whether it be our nation, whether it be our president, whether it be a loved one, whether it be yourself, I want to ask you to pray boldly. Pray boldly like Joshua did. Pray boldly today, tomorrow, the next day. The time, church, right now is the time for very, very, very bold prayer. And we can do it. We've got the God. We've got the one God and only God that can do it for us. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for this message today. And thank you for the scriptures and the stories that we have here. My Lord, I get so much encouragement from you. Hearing the words that, that, that are here in the Bible about Joshua. I get encouragement from this church family. And I ask that we keep encouraging each other to stay on the path because we're going to be going down a bumpy road. We, we, we can see that right now. But we're going to get through this, Lord. We're going to get through this because we have God sized faith. And we pray that we keep these God sized faith and that we spread the God sized love to all those that. Oppose us and all those that love us. We want to keep on going, Father God, because you give us the strength to go on. We ask that we keep keep looking for ways uh, to, to better your kingdom, to expand your kingdom. We ask this in uh, Jesus' name. Amen. So I dare not end the sermon without offering a lifeline if you don't know Jesus Christ and the Lord and Savior. Today's the day. Today's your lucky day. So come on up right now. Uh, and I'm talking to y'all too on our live feed. We don't forget about y'all folks there. So y'all, y'all can come on up on the feed if you got to, if you want to know Jesus today. Pretty, it's pretty simple. You ask Jesus to come into your heart, and I guarantee you will just admit you're a sinner and say, Lord, I want to know you. He's right there. He hasn't been anywhere else. He's been in front of you the whole time. You just might not know him. So make a profession of faith today because tomorrow's not promised. If you're looking for a church to join, you may join our church. We want you to join our church. Join Bethel Baptist Church. We're a loving church. Uh, send us message on the feed. If you have prayer, please come up right now or near the invitational hymn. Uh, as well as those on the live feed, you guys send me the prayer requests. I'll be down there in a minute and we'll pray for you before we close the service. But please come up, anyone here in the audience or on the feed. Thank you. Let's stand up, page 591. church let's pray for uh sister yvonne uh, father god let's lift up sister yvonne actually she didn't do a prayer request but i'm sure she won't mind me doing a prayer she just put a comment on here but we're going to pray for her anyway so i'm sure she won't mind father god lift up sister yvonne right now uh we love her very much and her mom too as well and, and lord you love her so much too as well uh even even more so than we can imagine so thank you father god for everybody on this feed thank you for sister yvonne uh lift her up in the sickness or any pain that she might be in 
uh, her mother too as well. We know Sister Rosie's been going through a lot, Father God. We're still going to be praying for her. Uh, we're going to pray a God-sized prayer uh, for her and the Jones family because, God, we know how big you are, Father God, or we want to know how big you are, Father God, and keep putting us in the right place to be your hand, Father God. Lift up Sister Rosie. Heal her. The, the sickness that she's in, the pain that she's in, take away the anxiety that she's in, Father God. Uh, same with Sister Yvonne. Uh, Tammy, Tammy Roper has a, a unspoken prayer request. Father God, be with Tammy Roper right now uh, and, and uh, lift, up, lift her up with whatever her, her request that she needs. You know what it is, Father God, uh, and you know what she needs. So lift her up right now in your name. Father God, be with uh, Vicki Coachman right now, who has gotten some good news from her, uh, her treatments, but she's still not out of the park. So Father God, lift up Vicki Coachman. Take away the sickness and the cancer if she's got any left on there uh, that she has and, 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 and help her to heal, Father God. Be with the family, too, right now who has anxiety or any pressures or any grief. May the Holy Spirit come upon them and bring them much joy right now in a timing of, time of grief. Uh, Father God, now we're getting some more prayer, prayer requests in church, which is good. Uh, Father God, please continue to pray for uh, Lynn Jones Sr., uh, and Lynn Jones Jr., uh, continued prayers for them, Father God. Lift them up, uh, guide them, protect them, give them strength. Let them know what an encouragement they are to their family. And, uh, you know, Lynn Jones is, is, is the, uh, the, the father of the family. He's, he, he's much needed, much respected, and much loved and much appreciated. We ask this, and you bless young Lynn Jones Jr. too as well with all their spiritual, physical, and daily needs. In Jesus' name, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and let Brother Robert close us out in the closing prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to get together face to face and fellowship.